Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The news this week, there was chaos at Saddam Hussein's trial when first his defence team and then Saddam himself walked out. One of the other defendants on trial is Saddam's half-brother. He used to be his whole brother until he borrowed his bike without asking. <laughs> The government's white paper on health includes proposals to allow for medical treatment to be made available in supermarkets. Mind you, if you're in for a vasectomy, I would ask them to wipe down the bacon slicer first. <laughs> George Bush delivered his State of the Union address. During his speech, Bush said, Our greatest advantage in the world has always been our educated, hard-working, ambitious people. Or as they prefer to be called, the Mexicans. <laughs> Bush's 52-minute speech was interrupted by applause 60 times. At the end of it, his hands were raw. <laughs> the government was defeated during the religious hatred bill by one vote after Tony Blair failed to show up. The failure of the bill means that I'm still free to make jokes about Muhammad and the Islamic religion. Free to, but I think you'll find not contractually obliged. <laughs> The vote was the first occasion in which Lib Dem MP Mark Oaten was back in the House since the scandal. Not for the first time, there was an audible gasp as Oaten slipped into the chamber. <laughs> Joining me tonight to work their way to a series of satirical games are six of the country's leading comedy performers. Andy Parsons, Roy Bremner and Sue Perkins, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and David Mitchell. Welcome to you all. Let's kick off with the round we call Headliners. I show the teams a recent photo along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. They then have to tell me what the letters stand for. Here's a picture of former Iraqi President Saddam Hussein. But what does STIC stand for? Saddam's Travolta impression controversy. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Saddam's tie invisible to cameras? <laughs> Could it be Saddam's trial in Cardiff? <laughs> See, the thing is, they were going to hold it at Wembley but they don't reckon it's going to be ready in time, so the whole thing is a bit up near. It's a nice touch for them to have built that wee guy a playpen, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably, though, Saddam's trial in chaos or something, isn't it? Oh, I is thought it? it was Saddam tonight in cabaret. I was about to... <laughs> <laughs> I thought like it that. was Saddam's testicle is caught. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it is, of course, uh, Saddam's uh, trial in chaos. Oh, is it? Yes, it is, absolutely, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you chucked that out as a kind of a, this'll be a funny one. Oh, hang on, is no. that the right answer? <laughs> yeah. The former Iraqi dictator's entire defence team walked out this week, soon followed by his half-brother and Saddam himself. Saddam walked out of his... Why didn't he think of that before? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't aware that you just, with a big door marked exit, you just go, excuse me, I should be back in just a minute. Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then you go... <laughs> <laughs> and God. Why would he drive first, then do the steps? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, why, why are people so surprised that he's behaving badly in court? This is a man who has murdered millions of people. They're suddenly going, God, he's, he's suddenly so impolite. You know, where's that nice man who gassed all the millions of Kurds? <laughs> I think it's, it's all the talk of Hitler being a vegetarian. People expect mass murderers to be polite yeah. on a one-to-one -one basis. <laughs> it's just not always true. <laughs> Stalin, apparently a total shit. <laughs> His defence is that he can't get an objective trial, isn't it? And he's kind of right, because it's not like I'm watching it at home going, I wonder if he did it. <laughs> <laughs> this could go either way. If, if it turns out that he really is innocent, then, the, you know, the media has definitely been biased. Yes. <laughs> It turns, out, it turns out he hadn't done a thing. <laughs> he wasn't even president of Iraq at all. He worked in this shop. The, uh, no, it is. His complaint, Saddam, is that the trial is too American, <laughs> which is nonsense because, A, he's famous, and in American courts, famous people always get off. Uh, and, <laughs> and if it's an American, he can defend himself. He could walk around the court to the jury and go, who among us? Who yeah. among us? <laughs> is it a crime yeah. to love your country that <laughs> much, is it? <laughs> Who have you, Mohammed? You, Hassan? Would you have you not gassed a curd now and again? <laughs> Look at me. I'm just a guy asking another guy to love me. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Yeah. Explain this to me. They have obviously taken his tie away so he can't hang himself. Well, and surely... yet the sentence will be that he is hanged. <laughs> <laughs> surely, if you really wanted to, you could hang yourself with your shirt. Yeah, I actually think there are like probably broadcasting regulations about us trying to work out a method of hanging <laughs> 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 
I think we fall foul of some sort of law here. You know, in case people go, I'm depressed, I'll, I'll turn on for a bit of a laugh. Come on, yeah. with me shirt. There's a time. <laughs> Do you mean you think there are suicidal people out there who are saying, I'd end it all if only there was a tie rack near here? Yeah. <laughs> when Saddam threatened to walk out, the newly appointed judge told him, if you leave now, then you can't come back. <laughs> Before adding, you treat this place like a hotel. <laughs> Ironically, the new judge used to be a member of Saddam Hussein's bath party, which is almost as feared as Michael Barrymore's pool party. <laughs> The winners of that round is are Frankie, Hugh and David. <laughs> Our next round is called Between the Lines and features Rory and Hugh. Would you make your way to the Mock the Week press pit, please? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media, while the other translates what they really mean. Rory, you are George W. Bush making his State of the Union address. Away you go. <clears throat> My fellow Americans <laughs> and people of New Orleans. <laughs> Last year, you re-elected me as president of our great country. If you think I'm stupid, what does that say about you? <laughs> Last year, in the State of the Union address, uh, I concentrated on domestic issues. I didn't want to talk about Iraq. <laughs> this year, going to concentrate on energy. I still don't want to talk about it a lot. <laughs> See, we face in America a great energy crisis. You see, in America, we have created a great energy crisis. <laughs> we have to reach an agreement with those countries who exploit the world's resources, uh, India, China, Asia. Invade India, China, <laughs> Asia. <clears throat> we have to woo ourselves off our addiction to oil. I did it with alcohol. <laughs> In conclusion, we have to somehow reduce our dependency on oil by 75%. That's nearly half. <laughs> Well done to both of you. And we're going to point to Hugh there. Congratulations. <laughs> now we play a game called Carousel of News. This game involves Sue, Hugh, Frankie and Andy. So if you can make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of newsworthy topics. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. If I judge the player's got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. Let's spin the wheel for the first topic. Ah, uh, creationism is the first topic. Huh. Hugh. Uh, yeah, there's a big debate uh, in religious schools and normal schools at the moment about whether we should teach uh, evolution or the creation story. I honestly don't think it matters, because for me, God is anyway obviously a builder. He's quite obviously a builder. He may have made the world in seven days, but the original quote said he'd take two and a half. <laughs> he may have made the heavens and earth and everything betwixt and between, but in places he did a very shoddy job. <laughs> Bracknell, for example. <laughs> but, the, but the clincher for me... I mean, that God is obviously a builder. I mean, he's quite obviously a builder. He couldn't be anything else. He tells us he's coming back, but he gives us no indication of when that will be. <laughs> <laughs> well done, you. You can sit down. <laughs> right, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is obesity. Who wants to come in on that? Uh, I'd like to start by congratulating the Scots, who've been voted the most obese nation in Europe, well done to you, uh, which is ironic really considering that the Scottish unofficial national anthem goes and I would walk 500 miles. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. That leaves us with Andy and Frankie and we'll spin the wheel one more time. One topic, you both have a go on it. Head to head. The topic is science and innovation. Andy, do you want to go first? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Science and innovation. Well, 
The government are currently there trying to innovate with some identity cards that they want us to have. Yeah. <laughs> Biometric identity cards, they want us to spend 93 quid. So as we carry around a card which has got extra information on it, such things as fingerprints and iris scans. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to carry my fingers <laughs> and my eyes around with me anyway. <laughs> and there is a cost to all this, of course. New Labour go, oh, well, it's only going to cost six billion. LSE, they reckon it's going to be more like 18 billion. I was wondering whether we could use a little bit of New Labour speak in our everyday lives. You know, you come home late from the pub. You said you'd be home at 11 o'clock. I merely stated that as a target. <laughs> <laughs> and let's face it, I would have been home much later under a Conservative administration. <laughs> Very good, Andy. Frankly, on the topic of science and innovation. <laughs> There's no scientific progress, OK? Do you remember when NASA used to be able to put people on the moon and now they can barely do a shuttle mission without killing everyone? <laughs> do, you, do you remember the last mission when they were pretending that everything was OK, even though that guy had had to go out on a spacewalk with a makeshift hacksaw? <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but if I was on a plane and I just watched the pilot shimmy out along the wing... <laughs> give me the big thumbs up. <laughs> A makeshift hacksaw? What kind of Blue Peter operation was that? <laughs> we can't hear you, Houston. The yogurt pots and string are not long enough. Thank you very much, Frankie. Uh, <laughs> typical on the side, but I think the points are going to Andy. Well done, Andy. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For each chosen category, I read out an answer and the players have to guess what the question might be. So, Andy, would you like to choose a category? Uh, could I have health, please? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, in a supermarket, what is the question? Is it, where will Chantel be working in three years' time? <laughs> I'm listening to a panpipe version of Phil Collins. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I just, on a personal note, is it where did I find one of my own videos in a remainder bin? <laughs> <laughs> where are fat people most likely to die? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're in very the, hungry. Yeah, I think. Mean, <laughs> reaching for the I ready meal. I can see the chain of events yeah. that led to them being there. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> I bet they didn't even get to the till. They're already no. way on the... Yeah. Uh, I, I, fizzy stuff and I hate that, when people try and... You know, they've eaten their cr some crisps and they try and ring through the packet. It's just I think the, pe the person should say, no, you've stolen that. <laughs> so, just a bit of planning. Get to the supermarket knowing that you've got enough time to shop before you'll starve to death. <laughs> Just the fact that it's Chris. How would you feel if a middle-class person did it with a jar of olives? You'd be all right. <laughs> You'd feel all right about that. Maybe you could you? use that small tray at the top, I think, to put some dips <laughs> out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and crudités. Yeah. You could have a lot. You Look, wouldn't I've care about that. Some just... and one of Hugh Dennis's remainder videos. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the answer to this? Where was Brooklyn Beckham's cousin Tesco conceived? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, no. I'm no. in America, where's a cheap and convenient place to buy a heavy-duty assault rifle? <laughs> <laughs> Where on the planet is the furthest you'll find milk away from bread? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you a clue. It's part of new government reforms. It's the thing about putting GPs in supermarkets. It is, actually, it? yes. The question is... Where will you soon be able to go and see a doctor under the government's much trumpeted health reforms? Do you know what's, what, what is interesting about this whole story, though, is that this, the government has trumpeted it and said this is a really good idea. And the supermarkets, not surprisingly, have gone, mm, I'm not sure, because for years they have been developing the uh, aroma of fresh bread. <laughs> and now the government is suggesting they replace it with the aroma of sick people. <laughs> 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 
couldn't, we, couldn't we have a system where you got points on your card for a serious illness? I'm sorry, sir, I'm afraid you've got asthma, but on the bright side, you've got enough points for a treadmill. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, you've got to go through five ailments or less. <laughs> If you know, the person that goes into this GP, you know, mm. halfway through their shopping, feeling a bit peaky, basically sure it's nothing, and they've got their fresh bread and everything in their trolley, and they leave it there, go into the doctor. Doctor says, "Yeah, you're gonna die." Who, who, what happens to their shopping? <laughs> they're probably not in the mood to continue their shop <laughs> and go home and make themselves yeah. a sandwich. That's all gonna have to be reshelved by someone. <laughs> Desperately inefficient. That's the human cost. <laughs> Part of, um, yeah, there is also this thing whereby you're meant to get five health checks throughout your life, yeah, isn't it? It's part five of five important wider stages. Thing. There'll be an MOT yeah. for you at five important stages. You don't want the, this health MOT to be anything like your car MOT, mm. do you? You know, you don't want to be there and the doctor walking around tutting, <laughs> giving you a little kick, going, <laughs> oh, you've had the cowboys in here. Yeah. <laughs> you've never obviously had a oh. smear test, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> what, Do what, a go. Did, they, did they talk to you like a mortar mechanic? <laughs> <laughs> There's a sharp inhalation as they lift them on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, love, I think your big end's going. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, doctors are being, um, are facing being less well trained anyway. What, what was the uh, urgent call by the Royal College of Surgeons this, during the week? New uh, knives? No. Cadavers. They're short of cadavers. There are people aren't donating their bodies to medical science. Yeah. And Why the truth is, there have been various scandals. Apparently, the most common thing when relatives are asked, well, would you like uh, if we use his body for medical science? The most common answer they give is, no, he's suffered enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think people should have any option. You think I, think, I think when you die, your body should revert to the state. And the state should be able to do whatever they like with it. It's stupid superstition. People saying, oh no, it matters what happens to your body. No, people shouldn't believe that. It's bollocks. <laughs> oh, very good point. Yeah. It's always, always this fast. <laughs> always this true. fast. There's some, you know, some hospital. Yeah, OK, they've, kept, they've secretly kept 25,000 brains over the last 40 years and all the relatives are crying. Well, didn't it hurt them before they knew? Don't tell them, you know. <laughs> nick, nick the bits. Oh, yeah, with the brains. Yeah, we saved loads and loads of lives. Oh, don't matter. I, I'm just upset that my uncle's brain was in a jar, not in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, no, there'll be a generation of doctors who can say that I have only... I, I'm sorry, I'd love to do the operation, but I've only ever performed it on a simulator, which yeah. means... Sim and I think, and I think if, I, if I lift out the kidney, it's not going to make a buzzing noise as an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it touches against the edge of the kidney. <laughs> shape of the oh, like, yeah. oh <laughs> do that again. All right. Yeah. <laughs> So you think we should demand people's corpses off them at death? Is yeah. <laughs> how, soo how soon into the whole grieving process would a man arrive in going, eh, that'll be ours well, now, thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> I say very... Oh, hoi! <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Did you not put it all together and actually have the corpses in the supermarket in the freezer section? So you just get, there's the frozen food, there's the chips, oh, and a corpse as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying we should eat people. <laughs> I think that's no, different. See, you've, you've left, you've left too much grey area here. I, I, haven't got a, I haven't got a cannibal card no, yeah. in the event of my death. You tuck really in. <laughs> <laughs> OK, in that round, I think the winners are Sankey, Hugh and David. We now play a round called Newsreel. We will play in a recent piece of news footage featuring some of the world's major figures and ask two of our players to voice the characters. Rory, you'll be Tony Blair. Hugh, you'll be Jacques Chirac. And you'll be discussing your latest summit meeting. <clears throat> uh, right, well, uh, glad you all come together. I think there's a few issues we still need to sort out and we'll look at the budget and go from there. Well, always you want to pay less, but uh, frankly, uh, we didn't have a starter. <laughs> um, <laughs> You had the pudding uh, and the main, but we didn't have a start up. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, we can go on about this, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's really quite a simple principle, you know, in a restaurant... And turkey. Turkey didn't have any of the duck. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> look, look, come on, look, let's make it quite clear. The rules of this game. Firstly, right, you have a starter, right? Okay. <laughs> you all have Secondly, all right, you have a main course, right? You're not listening. You're <laughs> simply not listening. <laughs> You never ever listen. What? Look, I didn't have any crab. Look, <laughs> I didn't have any crab. Well, and you are trying to make us pay. Well, okay. I mean, as far as I can tell, you've had crabs for a long time, but. <laughs> 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 to the point, all the glory, Bramner there.
<laughs> this next round is called Dating Videos. A player takes on the identity of a famous newsmaker and records a Lonely Hearts video in the style of that person. Everyone else has to try and guess who they are. Frankie, could you please make your way to the performance area, please? And we can see your dating video. Hello. I've done quite a few of these videos now, and I think I'm getting quite good. <laughs> I'm looking for a woman with long, flowing hair and golden skin, all wrapped up in a thick black cloth. <laughs> Look at these hands. They can disassemble an AK-47 in the dark. Imagine what they could do to you, baby. <laughs> so if you want to get in touch with me, it couldn't be simpler. Just go to the third butcher on Qatar High Street and present this man with a falcon. <laughs> he will know exactly what this means. <laughs> well done, Frankie, but who is it? Any guesses? It's Osama bin Laden. It is, of course, Osama bin Laden. Thank you, Satan. It is, of course, Osama bin Laden who recently reappeared on the world stage with the release of a new audio tape message broadcast by Al Jazeera. Apparently, it's only one side of the tape that offers the truth to Bush. The, uh, the other side of the tape actually is a mixtape. Bin <laughs> <laughs> Laden's done for Bush. It's uh, now that's what I call jihad. <laughs> and it's got uh, leaving on a jet plane. <laughs> you still haven't found what you're looking for. <laughs> we will rock you. <laughs> Sooner or later, they are going to catch him because there's a 25 million reward on his head, and I'm wanting to create a bit more interest. What they need to do, the Americans, maybe have a reward rollover. <laughs> well, how, can, how can they not find him? He's six foot three. He's on kidney dialysis. He walks with a cane. I could put together a crack team of me, Stevie Wonder, and David Blunkett and find this guy. <laughs> I think we'll find out soon, because now David Frost is on Al Jazeera. He's about, he'll get him on as a guest on Through the Keyhole. So. <laughs> I would you, Lloyd, who would live in a cave like this? <laughs> Let's review the evidence. A whole lot of military hardware and a dialysis machine. <laughs> is he really on a dialysis machine? Because if he is on a dialysis machine, we don't even have to kill him, do we? Or apparently, if you've got dodgy kidneys, right, you're supposed to avoid foods which are high in nitrogen Right, such as Codro and Tarama Salada. <laughs> what the hell are we dropping bombs for? <laughs> we should be dropping a series of dips <laughs> with some Pringles just to tempt him. <laughs> Can I say I would take your medical opinion seriously had you not gone? If you have dodgy kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> See, if more people gave their bodies to science, <laughs> mistakes like that wouldn't be made. <laughs> you could have a corpse in every classroom. <laughs> that's a catchy yeah. title that's for your initiative. That's a corpse that's in every classroom. Oh, yeah. so that's, that's one for the nature table. <laughs> Grandad! <laughs> The only, the only real advance in, in, in finding them, though, I thought was, was genius, was the fact that last week the uh, British Secret Service was accused of turning a rock into a listing device in <laughs> Moscow, which was meant nothing in Moscow, which you can imagine somewhere in a cave in Afghanistan, he's going, ha ha, a microphone in a rock. Oh. <laughs> no! It's like an Osama Bin Laden Twilight Zone episode, that is. Do you think MI6 sent the, the radio rock to the wrong place? And they've, they've actually got one that's the shape of a Russian doll that's <laughs> in the corner of uh, Osama's cave, sort of sticking out. <laughs> Whose is that? <laughs> Osama Bin Laden has said that he will never fall for any Western tricks to catch him. This is in a statement made to a man dressed as an Arab from the news of the world. <laughs> George W. Bush has admitted he doesn't know where Osama bin Laden is, or Pakistan for that matter, <laughs> or his arse, or often his elbow. <laughs> Very good. I think the winner of that round was Frankie. <laughs> now we come to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could all make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. Okay. The first subject is bad things to say at Prime Minister's question time. <coughs> Prime Minister, could you look interested while I bring up some boring shit about my constituency? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
Is this going to take long? Cos I've got an appointment with a rent boy in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask the Prime Minister? Are you paying too much for car insurance? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> We've got one, we've got two, we've got two more poofs than you! <laughs> uh, could, could I ask the Prime Minister, when are you going to retire, you bastard? <laughs> Prime Minister, my first is in P, but not in canoe. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> OK, next topic is the very worst person to be President of the US. I am President Jimmy, and the band was. <laughs> sure, what day, what day? <laughs> I'm Barry Scott, and this is Silly Bang. <laughs> <laughs> this round is much easier if you can do impressions. <laughs> Calm down, dear. It's a commercial. <laughs> Next topic is unlikely things to hear at the Oscars. And the award goes to Ross Kemp. <laughs> <laughs> the dress. Oh, Primark. <laughs> Unfortunately, King Kong can't be with us tonight, but... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't even in that one. <laughs> Thank you. This will be on eBay tomorrow morning. <laughs> they said they couldn't make the Sally Gunnell story. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> I'd like to thank the person who cast me as a blind, autistic, Parkinson disease-ridden newt <laughs> for, for making this award almost inevitable. <laughs> for best film in a foreign language, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> To the West! <laughs> As a gay cowboy, I think I know where I'll be putting this little fella. <laughs> We're gonna leave it there. The winner of that round is huge winner for Hughes winning that. Come back, come back, all of you, come back. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and David Mitchell. <laughs> Commiserations to Sue Perkins, Roy Bremner, and Andy Parsons. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Good night.